Ciao, I'm Marianne Esposito. Today on Ciao Italia, pasta handkerchiefs. Ciao, I'm Marianne Esposito. Welcome to Italy, and let's cook real Italian. Aren't they gorgeous? Swiss chard. I knew you said that. I'm in heaven. Think about how healthy this is. That's for you. Sunday sauce. All 20 regions of Italy are fabulous. And every time I do this, I think of my Nonna Galasso because she always made it this way. You want a Goldilocks dough, just right. Who doesn't like basil, especially in the summer? Obviously, you have to have pesto sauce at some point, right? I mean, I'm a cook. Why can't I try it? You're the best. No, you're the best. <laughs> Who doesn't like basil, especially in the summer? I don't know too many people who have a garden that don't plant basil because obviously you have to have pesto sauce at some point, right? Well, let me give you a few tips about basil. I can't take credit for this. I have to give it to my husband, Gaetano, who is the gardener for Ciao Italia. But this, under this beautiful little gauzy material is our basil crop. So I'm just gonna unveil half of it. So you can take a look. Now, when I did that, I got the whiff of beautiful peppery basil. And look at how gorgeous it is. Guess what? Do you see any bugs? Do you see any brown leaves? You don't. And that's because we put this row cover, which you can find in any garden store or hardware store, over the basil plants as they were growing. What this does is allows sun to come in and rain, but it keeps bugs off. So your basil is gonna grow beautifully. So now it's ready, and what I like to do is take the very smallest leaves of basil to make pesto sauce the way they do it in Liguria, because of course in Liguria, pesto is king. And in Liguria, you have to use the smallest basil leaves because they give the best flavor. In addition, you don't have to pound them so long because they're small and they're gonna break apart very easily. So when you are harvesting basil, you want to make sure that you take it like that. And then what I do here is I actually smash these stems. Yep, sounds terrible. Smash the stem. You can do that with a meat pounder or something clean, you know, a can that you've wrapped in uh, some foil or something. That allows water to really go up this stem and it keeps the basil beautiful. You never want to keep it in the refrigerator because basil is very fickle about cold. It doesn't like cold. And you want to keep water off of its leaves. Look at these. I really don't have to do anything to this. I don't have to wash it because it's all very clean. So I need about, oh gosh, two big bunches of basil to make classic pesto sauce the way they do it in Liguria. And then that's going to go over a type of pasta called fazoletti. So here's this beautiful basil that I took out of the garden. Remember I showed you all of those little tricks about keeping bugs off basil and allowing air and sunlight to get in by using that row cover, the rime. So when you bring it in, you really do not want to wet it because basil does not like water on its leaves and it also doesn't like to be cold. So we are going to use this basil today that came out of my garden to make a Ligurian pesto, the classic Ligurian pesto sauce. So where is that exactly in Italy? Right here. See this little crescent area? This is Liguria, sometimes known as the Italian Riviera. Maybe some of you have traveled in there to the Cinque Terre, the five towns that connect that you can walk to along these steep hills. Very interesting region, Liguria, and known for seafood and for lots of things with herbs. But the classic dish is pasta with pesto, trenette or trifoli, which is another type of pasta that they, that they make there. So here are our leaves, and I'm going to make the pasta first, and then we're going to work on making the pesto. So let's put that aside. So we're going to start 
on a board, as most Italians would. Do they still make pasta by hand at home in Italy? I'm beginning to wonder. So anyway, we want to make a fontana, a well. I still make pasta at home. And a little bit of salt. Un pizzico di sale, as they say. OK. So in there, we want to add two eggs, two whole eggs, and two egg yolks. Now this is where we get really, really regional because there are so many areas of Italy where they make fresh pasta using all whole eggs. Some use only the yolks plus whole eggs. Some use the whites plus whole eggs. Some use wine. Some... It's very regional. So in this application, we are using two whole eggs and two whole egg yolks. They go right there. OK, and use an egg separator when you separate eggs. So now we just want to mix that up a little bit with a fork, because we're going to make we're going to make a, a fettuccine type pasta, which is similar to the trenette that they make in Liguria. So once you break up the eggs like that, you can give this a little bit of white wine, of course, because this is the way they do it. So just a little scotch, oops, that may be a bit much, of white wine goes in the center. And then you start bringing in this flour into the center. And don't worry if this whole thing collapses, because you can just use your hand to kind of hold the whole thing together. What you want to do is try to get this into a semi-dough state. So then you can put the fork down, and you can start making this into a ball of dough by hand. So it takes a little bit of practice, but you could also make this in a food processor if you didn't want to go through this particular method of doing it in a fontana, which is the classic way, of course, of doing it. And how much flour do I need? Well, I've got two cups of flour on the board right now. I don't know if I'm going to need more. It all depends on how much these eggs will take and all this other liquid. So I'm just going to have to gauge it. And that all comes with just doing it, with experience, with just getting your hands into the dough. So now I'm going to put that fork down and use my hands to make a nice dough. About a couple years ago when I was in Liguria, I was taking a group to cooking school. And of course, I wanted to show them how pesto is made, the classic way. Not in a machine, but in a mortar and a pestle, which is the classic way to do it. So we went to a farm where the basil leaves were growing like just fields and fields of fresh basil. And there we saw how they used only the smallest leaves of the basil plant, the top two leaves of the basil plant, to make pesto. OK, so this is looking good. Now I have a little grab on this board. It's a lot easier to do it on a wood surface than any other kind of surface. OK, that's looking good. Don't see any more white flour. So now we have to let this dough rest for about 30 minutes just to relax the gluten so it's easier for us to roll out. Watching dough rest is like watching paint dry. But I think this is ready. So here's our dough. And it's a lot softer than the one that I just made. So this is a second dough. And I put two little holes there, and I watch to see how much they close up. If they close up entirely, I know i got to wait. I think I could go. What do you think? I think I'm going to do it. All right, so we want to work with small pieces at a time. So I'm going to cut the dough up into quarters. Work with one piece at a time. Put these over to the side, covered, so we don't want them to dry out. OK, so now. We want to flatten this dough, and we're going to put it through a pasta machine. So you put a little flour down on a board. And then out you get your rolling pin. 
and flatten it out. You have to do this first before you put it through the pasta machine because you don't want to put something that's thick in the pasta machine which will strip the, de the gears. So roll it somewhat flat. And at that point, you can see whether or not it needs more flour, and you can add it. You don't want to add too much flour. So that looks good to me. So now, here's our pasta machine. Now, if you didn't have a pasta machine, you would be doing this by hand, rolling out a sheet of dough into a long, big round. But, you know, sometimes you got to do it the easy way. So this is a pasta machine. It has a knob here which controls the thickness and thinness of the dough. We're gonna put it through the roller. So I'm gonna start on two. I don't want a dough that's too thin, nor do I want one that's too thick. I kind of go up in increments of two. So two, four, and I know that I have enough flour in this dough because you see it's not sticking, it's not tacky, it's just about the right consistency. When I can see my hand like that behind the dough, then I know that that's probably thick enough. So, that was six. You know what, I think I'm gonna go one more. A little bit more flour. That's better. That's perfect. Now you can really see my hand. You could before, but I wasn't really happy with that, so. I'm going to Liguria right here in the kitchen. Okay, that makes a long, long sheet. Okay. Whew. So, now we have this sheet of dough. And you can cut it to work with it in, in smaller pieces. So to make the fazoletti, which in Ligurian dialect means handkerchiefs, little, little handkerchiefs, you need like a little template. So, you know, this is mine. And I just put it right on the sheet of dough. And then I just cut out. This is like four by four, four by four inches. So you get something like this. And you make a lot of these. This is a classic pesto pasta. This is a classic pasta that is served with a fresh pesto sauce. And it does look like a little hanky. In dialect, that's also called mandrilli. So mandrilli, fazoletti, it means the same thing. And if you've ever been in Liguria, you know what a beautiful region that is, the Italian Riviera with very steep hills and buildings clinging to the side and the turquoise water coming up along, very colorful boats and houses all painted in different colors of orange, yellow, buff. It's beautiful. All right, so don't, I, I'm, I'm getting beyond myself here. So let's make a couple more and I think you get the idea. So, Fazoletti. All right. So, those are the fazoletti. So now that we have those, we need to make the pesto sauce. So this is a mortar and a pestle. And actually that's where the word pesto comes from. Pestare means to pound down. And to do this the traditional way, you have to do it in a mortar with a pestle. A lot of people have a wooden pestle but I have a marble one. So um, you could do this in a food processor, but the results are not gonna be the same. The leaves will be bruised, it'll be watery. This is the classic way to do it. And I'm not gonna fool you. This takes time, yes indeed. So what do we have to start with? Well, to make a classic pesto, you obviously need the, pe the, you, the basil leaves. And like I said, the smallest leaves possible because it's easier to pound those down. You need pine nuts, you need garlic, you need some coarse salt that acts as an abrasive, and you need cheese, and you need olive oil, and you need a little bit of pepper maybe at the end. A lot, some people like to use walnuts for this, but classic with pine nuts. 
Okay, so how do we start? Well, we start with the garlic cloves in the bowl and we add a few grains of the coarse salt, really coarse salt. This salt happens actually to be from Cervia uh, when I was in Italy, so where the salt works are. So what you do is you start pounding down the garlic with the salt in the, in the uh, mortar and you'll start to see that it becomes somewhat creamy. See? Hey, at that point, when you see it like this, that's when you can add the pine nuts. So here we have pine nuts. Some people like to toast them. It's up to you. So now you put the pine nuts in and you give them a mash as well. You really want to get that blended with the garlic. And when I was in Liguria, of course, we went to a basil farm, as I was telling you, where the basil is, of course, D-O-P, Denominazione Origine Protetta, which means that the basil is grown in a specific area under specific conditions. And that what, what is what makes a D-O-P product. So it's a particular region. It has to come under certain rules. The product have to, has to pass inspection by a group of governors, so to speak, to be considered true pesto. So now we have the pine nuts kind of punched down well, and we can start with the basil leaves. Now, if we were in a Ligurian kitchen, think about this. What they would do is not only use the smallest leaf, but they would tear the leaf like that and like that and take out that center stem. Huh? And who has time for that? I love you all, but guess what? We're not doing that. So you take a few leaves at a time and you start mashing them in the mortar. And this is gonna take about 20 minutes to do, I would say. So try to go up against the sides of the mortar and you go in a rotating motion, circular rotating motion. And you think it's never gonna happen, but eventually it does. So you add a few more leaves. And once you have pounded down about two cups of small basil leaves, then you wanna add some olive oil. Preferably, if you had Ligurian olive oil, that would be perfect. But since we don't live in Liguria, and it may be difficult for you to find Ligurian olive oil, you could just use a good extra virgin olive oil. And your arms are gonna start to hurt, I'm gonna tell you that. So you continue on like this until you have something that is like a paste. about 10 minutes worth of work. Now we have a paste consistency and we're going to add cheese. So here we have some pecorino cheese, and about two good heaping tablespoons. And we get that mixed in with the pesto. You know, while I'm doing this, I'm, I'm just so reminded of the fact that a lot of people go to the Riviera, to the Italian Riviera, the, the Cinque Terre, but they never go to Genoa. And Genoa is a, just a beautiful city in the region of Liguria. I love it because a lot of the architecture is just so wonderful. The, the black and white striped buildings, the Duomo, the lions outside in front of the Duomo. It's all really beautiful and really, really a very wealthy city at one time because Genoa was, was known as La Superba. It was one of the major, major ports of Italy. So now that we have the cheese in there, we want to add some extra virgin olive oil. And like I said, if you had Ligurian olive oil, that would be perfect. But just, you know, a little drizzle at a time, just enough to give it a saucy consistency. And a little goes a long way. So when we put this on the fazoletti, it's going to coat them lightly because this has got a a peppery taste, you know, basil, basil, basilico in Italian is a word from the Greeks. 
and it means kingly, kingly basilico. And of course, it's, it's used all over Italy, but when you're talking about pesto sauce, you are talking about Liguria. Now, when we put this with the pasta, we're gonna dilute it with a little bit of the pasta water, but I want you to see the consistency of it. See, pesto. Now, here's a tip for you. So, here's how you can keep it once you make it. So here's some that we made ahead of time. And to keep it green, you put the pesto in a jar, and if air is gonna oxidize that, and it's gonna turn it brown. So to prevent that from happening, you wanna put a layer of olive oil over the top so that no air is seeping in. And I guarantee you that that will stay green. Here's one that we did months ago. I get the cap off. And you can see what's happened there at the top. If I take that oil layer off the top, which has a little exposed, has been exposed to the air, you see the pesto underneath has not. But it's aged a little bit sitting in the jar. I mean, it's perfectly usable. But you see how it is when you first do it and then when you keep it for a long time. But you can keep it in the refrigerator like that. As long as you pour olive oil over the top to seal it. So every time you would use a little bit of it, whatever was left in the jar, you pour a little bit of extra virgin olive oil over it, cap it again, and put it back in the refrigerator. So that's a little tip for you. If you wanna make a lot of pesto when you have it in your garden or when it's in season and you wanna get it at the farmer's market. So now that we have this, we are ready to cook the fazoletti. When you're cooking fresh pasta, you have to remember something. It's gonna cook in a lot less time than a dried pasta, like a pasta that's made just with flour and semolina. This is an egg-based pasta, so it's gonna cook very quickly. So in rapidly boiling water, you wanna add some salt. And then here are the fazoletti that we made. We're gonna put them in, and I'm gonna tell you, these are gonna cook in about three minutes max. The worst thing you can do to pasta, whether it's fresh or dried, is overcook it. So that goes in. And here is our second layer. And they're hardly gonna cook at all. As soon as I throw them in, another minute or so, they're going to be ready. So you really have to watch that. I'm gonna give that a stir. And they're so light and delicate. And while they are cooking, what you have to do is take a little bit of that pasta water. You're gonna add that to your pesto sauce just to smooth it out. Because this water has starch in it. And the starch is something that helps the sauce cling to whatever pasta you're making. So you do this for any type of pasta that you're making, whether it's a, a dried pasta from a box or a fresh pasta like this. So I took out about a tablespoon of water. I'm gonna add that to the pesto sauce. I wish you could be here to smell this. These little hankies, as they're called, are absolutely fabulous and very Ligurian. Let's eat! The next time you're in Liguria, why don't you order fazoletti, now that you know how they're made? Remember, we started with making fresh pasta, cut them into little handkerchief sizes, and then we tossed them in a homemade pesto, made in a mortar and a pestle with fresh basil leaves. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. Ciao.